Okay, in this video we will work through several relatively simple examples of derivatives involving trig functions. And in each case we're given a function and we're told to find the derivative. So the first one, f of x, is the cosecant of 5x. We need to find f prime, the derivative. Well, the derivative of the cosecant function is negative cosecant x tangent x. So the derivative of cosecant 5x is negative cosecant negative cosecant 5x times the tangent of 5x. But then we recognize we have an inner function here, so we have to multiply by the derivative of the inner function, which in this case is just 5. And it makes sense to put the 5 out front. So I get negative 5 cosecant 5x times the tangent of 5x. In the next one I have y equals negative 3 secant squared 3x. Well, what's the derivative of the secant function? That's secant x tangent x, but this is the secant of 3x squared. So my outer function is the squaring. And this negative 3 is going to stick around here as a constant multiplier. So y primed is going to be negative 3. And now let's apply the power rule to this. So it's going to be times 2 times the secant of 3x all to the power of 1. So I don't need to write that. But then I need to differentiate my inner function. Remember my outer function here was the squaring. My inner function is secant of 3x. So I multiply all of this by the secant of 3x. And the derivative of the secant function is secant times tangent. So the derivative of secant of 3x is going to be the secant of 3x times the tangent of 3x. And then I still have an inner function on that. So I multiply by the derivative of the inner function there, which is just 3. So now let's just clean up a little bit. This is going to be negative 3 times 2 times 3. That's negative 18. And then I have secant of 3x times secant of 3x. So it's negative 18 secant squared 3x times the tangent of 3x. Okay, the third one. g of x is the cosecant cubed of 4x. Okay, the derivative of the cosecant function is negative cosecant times the cotangent, but the cosecant function is really our inner function. That is cubed, so we apply the power rule first here. So g primed of x is going to be 3 times cosecant squared of 4x times the derivative of cosecant 4x. And that's going to be negative cosecant 4x cotangent 4x. And then let's clean that up some. We end up with the oh, oh, and we need to multiply by the derivative of the inner function here, the 4x. So we end up saying times 4 after all of that. The chain rule, there's one more link in the chain there. So I almost forgot that. So now if we clean this up, we've got a negative and a 3 and a 4. So that will be negative 12. And then I have this cosecant squared 4x and a cosecant 4x. So that's going to be cosecant cubed 4x and then this cotangent 4x is still over there. So that's my answer in this particular case. Negative 12 cosecant cubed 4x times the cotangent of 4x. Okay, the next one here. The secant x times the cotangent x. Now when you look at this you might immediately think, okay, a product, secant of x times the cotangent of x. So we can differentiate this with the product rule. But this one's a little bit easier if we simplify first, and this can save a lot of time. And anything that you can do to save time and save steps uh, helps not only reduce the amount of time it takes, but also uh, prevents opportunity for error. Watch this. P of x, now this is p, not p primed. P of x is the secant function, which is 1 over cosine x, times the cotangent function. And cotangent of x is cosine x over sine x. And these guys cancel out. And we're just left with 1 over the sine of x. And 1 over the sine of x 
is cosec and x. What this is right here is my original function here just simplified. P of x is simply cosecant x if we simplify it. And we can, we can differentiate that. The derivative of the cosecant function is negative cosecant x times the cotangent of x. And we're done. So that's a lot quicker and faster than the product rule and a lot less error prone simply because there are fewer steps. If you can reduce the number of steps to your solution, that reduces the possibilities for error. So the second one here, or the next one here, is, a, is very similar. We can approach it the same way. Let's try to simplify this given function. h of x is cosecant of x, which is 1 over sine so I have 1 over sine of x times the tangent of x which is sine x over cosine x and in a very similar manner these signs cancel out so my original function is just 1 over cosine x which is the secant of x so the derivative of that and we know this because we just found the derivative of the secant function this is one of the things you should memorize the derivative of the secant x is secant x times tangent of x and then the last one, y equals cosine cubed of 5 times tangent squared of 3. And you might be thinking, well, we could uh, try to simplify this sum or, um, or do a product. But think here, think carefully. The answer here, y primed, is 0. And if you don't see that, look carefully at this. There's no x in the given function here. Cosine cubed 5 times tangent squared of 3 is simply a constant. I don't have any idea off the top of my head what number that is, but I could punch in the calculator cosine of 5 and cube it and the tangent of 3 and square it and multiply them together and that would be the number. It's whatever number that comes out to be doesn't really matter. Just the fact that it is a number is what's important. It's a constant and the derivative of a constant is 0. So don't get stuck doing a bunch of uh, derivatives of trig functions and a product rule if you don't have to. In this case, it's just the derivative of a constant. Very, very simple.